What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the You Know Birds podcast, and I'm here with the Bell and the Bird crew, and Howie Roseman has done it again, folks. The Tennessee Titans seemingly never learning their lesson, not picking up the phone when Howie Roseman calls. I cannot believe that this has happened once again, but the Eagles have acquired safety Kevin Byard from the Tennessee Titans, two-time All-Pro a guy who just makes plays on the defensive end. And it's so funny because last night I'm sitting there and there were two thoughts that were mainly running through my head and I saw a few people throwing them out there on the timeline. I threw them out as well. The first was, damn, we really need safety help, secondary help. Solved one of those issues. And the other thought was, why did the Tennessee Titans trade us A.J. Brown, who is the <laughs> best wide receiver in Eagles history? And he was destroying once again last night. So... John, thoughts thoughts on another Howie Masterclass? Fifth fifth and sixth round pick along with Edmonds, who was driving us insane last night for Kevin Byard, a guy who two years ago led the NFL in interceptions. Yeah, don't miss bracket coverage against Tyreek Hill. Otherwise, you're going to get traded on a Super Bowl team. <laughs> Immediately. And, yeah, I, thank God they acted that quickly. And, of course, the the shot of Jeffrey Lurie going around look like a, look, looking like a grumpy old man during that play and just like, all right, fuck it. Pull, pull the, pull the trigger. Whatever it is, we'll make the deal. So I am, uh, I am jacked about. Well, I'm always jacked about uh, AJ uh, first and foremost. And of course, the answer to your question, Trill, is because Trail and Burks is the same wide receiver, right? It's the, it's a one to one. So there's exactly no, no one won or lost the trade. Uh, yeah, but and you don't uh, have to pay. <laughs> you don't have to pay Burks. More importantly, yeah, you don't They're have the to same pay level him. of wide receiver. You don't have to pay Burks. So it's a win <laughs> for the Titans. But. Um, Dude, Kevin Byard being here is uh, – I didn't expect that to happen. I, I thought there was going to be some, you know, other schmo that comes off the street until Blankenship kind of gets a little more healed up and comes on back. But this is incredible. This allows you to <laughs> do a lot of different stuff with Slay. It makes actually me, me uh, feel uh, a lot more comfortable about Slay and his old hippie bones uh, trailing the number one wide receiver for whoever, you know, probably digs uh, in the next two weeks too. So that'll be – this is uh this will be a huge help in in terms of that and I'm sure we'll get into some dolphin stuff and all the whiny beat reporters that came in and out of town were so much fun we get to talk about the tush push for like the millionth time because no one can get over it but um yeah, yeah fellas I don't know if you had any other thoughts about uh Kevin uh being here but um you know Teron Davenport a good friend of ours like loves Kevin Byard and has you know covered him now for a good amount of time. I, I trust his opinion on all this, and like he doesn't know how you're going to be able to deal with this Eagles defense now. So, I'm I'm pretty fucking jacked about this. Yeah, Tyre, uh, if you want to add what you said uh, regarding Howie uh, when he is uh, making these deals, if I'm 31 other GMs in the NFL and I see a 215 area code pop up on my caller ID, I'm not answering the fucking phone. Like, why? <laughs> Do you, do you guys just like to be – I swear that the uh, Titans GM just love to be tortured at this point because there's no other – I swear he just he, – he, he loves torture. There's no other way to explain how you give uh, probably one of the best and one of the most versatile safeties for statistically one of the worst safeties this year in the NFL. And on top of that, late round picks. How does Howie continue to get away with this? I, I don't – I don't – listen. If there's ever a hole in this team for years to come, so long as Howie Roseman is the general manager, I'm not worried. I'm sitting back, and I'm relaxed. And like John said last night, I swear, everybody just saw how Terrell Edmonds blew that bracket coverage, and they were just like, all right, fuck it. Yep, call call the Titans. Immediately. Call them. That's it. Yep. I'm done. Like, it, it – not only does this shore up and it, it kind of solidifies the safety position a little bit more, but also Kevin, Kevin Byard is a guy that you can also play slot corner as well. This yep. is a very versatile safety that can do multiple things out there. So he doesn't just cover up one position. He covers, he covers up multiple positions that now we can kind of sit back and be like, you know what? Now we're cool in the secondary. Now I have no worries. I'm not even going to bitch and moan about the linebackers no more. I don't give a damn. I, listen, I, maybe I'm starting to see the light that you guys have been saying saying to me for some time now. Shut up, That's Vince. right. <laughs> yep. Come on over. Come on over, baby. Maybe I'm Come on over. Do light. not matter. But at this point, I'm, I have no complaints no more about, about the defense. We're rocking out. 
I'm almost ready to say the S word. I'm almost ready to say we're we're going back. I'm almost okay. ready to say it. Vince, before I let you cook for a second here, if you're listening, Howie, get a Google Voice number so you don't have a two one five number anymore. <laughs> And also continue to look for GMs that have humiliation kinks and love to be embarrassed in the media because it's just great. It f- There's no better feeling than having everyone agree that you fleeced a team. This is why we love slop. This is why we love trades. This is why when you diagnose a problem with your football team, not waiting around and hoping that it solves itself. Okay, what were we talking about a few weeks ago? Third wide receiver, slot wide receiver. Let's go, let's try to get Julio Jones, which we didn't even talk about yet. But let's try to get him. Why not? Let's take a flyer on him. Okay, secondary looks like they could have some weaknesses. Safety room hasn't been great to start the year. They're banged up as well. Let's go solve that issue by getting a guy who made the all-pro team two years ago. So, uh, once again, fantastic work. And, uh, Vince, uh, I'll, let, I'll clear out and let you cook for a second now. Yeah, first off, uh, Tyre, welcome to the right side of things. Linebackers just don't fucking, <laughs> they just don't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. But, like, the, the amazing thing is when you look at this deal, like, Terrell Edmonds was clearly, by the league, worth nothing. He's worth nothing. Like, I don't know what, if you're Tennessee, I don't know what you get out of this. What, what is the benefit for the Tennessee Titans to get a fifth and sixth round pick for a guy that's an all-pro player and shows up all the time and plays multiple positions? Like, they didn't get anything out of this. They didn't get better. They don't, their future is not better as a result of moving this guy. And it's not even like you can get to the point, yeah, saving money, I guess. That's it. That like, is it. And it's the second time they've done this. Trade, now, look, A.J. Brown was obviously much younger, but... Like, you know, Bayard's 30, but it's all about saving money. That's all these trades are ever about in the NFL. It's crazy. Like, it, in my opinion, if you're an NFL owner and you're doing anything to save money in, in that kind of situation when you, you have no future currently and you're, you're just trying to save money, sell the team. Like, you're you're in a business of billionaires. I mean, you have no business going around and going, oh, you know, we could save uh, $8 million for this year. Like, you need, you need to give people actual belief, right? If you're going to give up on something, you want that long-term investment. Like, the thing that Howie does so well is when he trades for things and he brings guys in, he does it with the idea that, okay, uh, not only am I going to get a good player, but I can get a comp pick for this in a year. And, like, you know, DeAndre Swift could theoretically be a third-round pick a year from now, and, and that's a huge win for the kind of production that he's getting. Uh, there's a chance that, you know, Bayard, maybe they restructure him and, and let him go at the end of the year or something. Like, who knows? Uh, but if he were to hit the market, you'd get a good pick for Kevin Bayard going to the free agent market and signing a deal. Like, there's just there's just things around that you can do. Odds are the Eagles will extend them, but all the same. Like, for Tennessee, it's just they're just a bad franchise. They don't know what they're doing. They're still playing, like, Eddie George 1995 football. I don't know why they're doing that. Uh, and, and they can keep trying as much as they want, but like that, that thing is just, it's one of the worst run franchises in the league. They've been dying slowly for like four years now, ever since Derek Henry ran the ball 80 times in a playoff game to beat the Patriots by like three points. And, uh, they're, they, they're just irrelevant. So for Howie to go through and be like, yeah, this team is really dumb. Let me get the perfect piece for my team. That's ready to win a Super Bowl. And Oh, by the way, this flexibility, like Bradbury, you can run him on the outside more. You've got all these problems in the nickel spot you can experiment still with ricks and see how guys like that do i mean it's it's just killer man like it, it is not fair to have this many deals year after year of guys that absolutely hit like it just it shouldn't happen so you're telling me that after going up against the best offense in football and really only giving up seven points because three of those points were given up due to a fumble that was already in field goal range by jalen hurts holding that offense to seven points wasn't good enough is my thing. It's like, it's always looking to get better. It's always looking to take advantage of an opportunity of a market that might undervalue someone or something. And that's the the competitive advantage that the Eagles front office has over every other team in the NFL. They're ahead of the curve on all of this stuff. Like they, like whether it's the comp picks, whether it is finding value, like if, like you said, if Bayard walks after the year, they'll either get a compensatory pick or, they will, uh, you know, they'll, they'll probably come up with some sort of extension, like you said. But even if you lose a fifth, a, a, like at, at worst, probably a six round pick in this scenario, those just don't mean anything to me when you're competing for Super Bowls, when you're trying to go all in. And we know this team is good enough and has a few key weaknesses that I think that they have shored up over the last week or two. And 
I, I just I love that they're they're always hungry for more. That's the big thing for me is that they never they never sit with we're good but we're not like we're, we we could be better and and it's it's amazing to me. Yeah, and, and they're not sacrificing always... the future to do it. By the way, nope. like you look at the Rams oh. and all they do is sacrifice the future, which worked. They got a Super Bowl, but for the Eagles, what do they give up? I mean, they still have everything. They had two top ten picks in the draft this year, like or, or a top ten pick in the draft and two first rounders. Like they just have. So many good things going on all the time that it's like it's not just this current window, but it's just like eternity. It just feels like it's it's never going to end. Yeah, and the massive setups like keep hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. Like Vince had top ten pick ended up being Jalen Carter, which is improving the Super Bowl run. Like, and we'll get to the into the nitty gritty of that too. And it's just like I keep thinking about all these different things. Is like you know, Ty, you asked the question. Why is why do people or everybody ask this question? Why would you keep trading with Howie Roseman? It's because he knows what you want before he picks up the phone. He is analyzing your cap data and versus what he needs, and he's so good at that, and so is his team, and God knows his analytics department is too. And sure as fuck, the Titans are slow as shit, probably using all that as well. So like. You're going to find all these different weaknesses. You know which teams to pick on year after year or situation after situation. And we always are stunned asking the same questions like, holy shit, I thought the Eagles were stuck as soon as they got, you know, <laughs> made, made a terrible trade and not to, or a draft pick and not taking Justin Jefferson. And they bounce everything out. They move Wentz's contract all to lead to shit like this. Like, it's it's incredible the turnaround and not only that like it keeps getting better unlike the Super Bowl run from 17 to 18 where it just like was this aging dying thing and this thing that we're talking about where this it's brewing a dynasty this is exactly what it looks like and this is shrewd as hell and like we're t exactly true we're talking about Julio Jones as the third slot wide receiver with AJ Brown Smitty and Goddard heading into the playoff run heading into November, heading into seeing Dallas and going to seeing all them cry about probably referees too. I don't know what their excuse is going to be in a, in a couple of weeks either, but it's just he knows what you want, and there's no way that he, you're not going to take that offer because it's he's got you. That's how good that's how good this franchise is. It just it will find a way every single time, and unless Howie is like, I don't know gripping someone's hand over the zoom call very hard and saying give me the fucking player then i don't have any other answers other than he's the best gm at, at making deals and yeah, will continue to be yep i mean we see this all the time in the nba we always talk about try to make deals with the young front offices and try to make deals with the dumb and desperate front offices and what are those teams in the nba it's always the detroit pistons the charlotte hornets the uh, Danny Ainge always would make trades with the Minnesota Timberwolves. He's made two insane trades, and Howie is like the Danny Ainge of the NBA. He's a bit ruthless. He leans into analytics a lot, and he's going to fleece these lesser front offices that really have no idea what they're doing. And kind of lost in all this is that this is not even the same GM that traded AJ Brown to us. He was fired after he traded. He actually got fired the week that the Eagles and the Titans played last season after the game which was just funny timing altogether. So he loses his job due to trading A.J. Brown uh, and him coming back to destroy the Titans. And then a year later, the Titans make another trade with uh, the Eagles. And at least on, on a value perspective, seems like an absolute grand slam. And man, I, I've been really impressed with the defense over the last few weeks. Uh, and the one thing that I felt like they could really use help with. Obviously, we, we've all talked about the secondary ad nauseum here, but the one thing I felt like they really could use help with is just making plays. Like, they don't cause turnovers. This was, last night, Slay's interception was the first turnover since Jalen Carter forced a fumble in the Tampa Bay game, which feels like a decade ago to me. So, if that's the case, what do you do? You go out and you get a guy who can, like Tyre said, he can play in the slot, he can play safety, he can cause havoc, He's just constantly racking up tackles, uh, you know, let, had four interceptions last year, five interceptions the year before, has had multiple seasons like that throughout his career, and I just can't think of a better fit for what the Eagles needed, and we knew that he was going to solve some issues, but there's just this is just such a hand-in-glove fit for an already improving defense that needed that one last thing to really put them over the top for me when we go up against these elite offenses when 
things really matter and good luck to Brock Purdy and Jared Goff, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, 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 I just, I, I know we've talked a lot about those guys this season because those teams have been other than the Eagles. They've had the, the best record in the NFL, but the, the amount of talent that they're going to have to face, not only for their offensive line, like the Ravens absolutely destroyed the lions in the trenches yesterday but now you're talking, and, and the 49ers have looked vulnerable in that department as well against the Browns a week ago, and now you're just adding another playmaker to this Eagles defense. Like, I just don't even, I don't even really know how how they stand a chance against this defense. And the only thing that, like, come, comes across my mind, and really for anybody to answer, would you have just pulled the trigger on, I, I don't know, what whatever CJGJ was asking in the offseason at 8 or $10 million to not go through this? Or is it worth it? I mean, I, to my understanding, Kevin Byard's contract is is like three million dollars, a three million dollar cap hit, right? They already paid the seven million uh, yep, in the signing bonus. It's eleven million for his contract. So the Eagles and they've already paid some. The Eagles only have to pay about three million dollars for the rest of the year. All and right, also, well that... look, I'm not going to act like I'm a an expert over here, but from an availability standpoint and from a talent standpoint. From what I understand, Byard's just a way better player. So that's oh he is yeah yeah so yeah so, like like I said like I'm not gonna sit here and act like I've watched a ton of his film, but just a better player for less money, and you had to give up so little to get it. And we'll see what happens with the extension whenever we get to those talks. But for this year, couldn't be more of a home run. Yeah, yeah his cap um, hits fourteen uh, million dollars. So like for next year, so the odds are they're gonna extend that anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I mean the, the only argument for CJ sure. would have been he was not guaranteed. I mean, he was going to make, uh, what, like eight, nine million dollars a year was the estimate, something like that. So, I mean, you would have gotten him for a good deal less and he's a younger player, but he did have injury issues. And there's a reason that the Saints gave up on him when, you know, he was such a young guy and, and was a good player. So for Bayard, who's, you know, just absolutely rock solid and like, look, can we get on the, the from here element? Can we do that for a minute? Because like the Eagles <laughs> oh, are all about that. <laughs> we got to get yep. into it. I mean, it's it's killer, right? Yeah. Like Swift, Philly guy, Reddick, Camden, yeah. Zacchaeus, say, sorry, Swift, guy. West Swift, Philadelphia. Swift, we got rid of your friend Edmonds. They were at the Phillies game a week ago. That clip was hilarious. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> but did. we did get you another Philly guy in the house. So, <laughs> uh, uh, Real quick on that, he said it was his first MLB game ever, and he definitely went to see a Pittsburgh Pirates game and, and forgot about it. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> Wouldn't that we all? Uh, does it really count as baseball <laughs> if the Pirates are playing? I mean, honestly. Yeah, not really. Yeah, not really. It's one of the worst franchises oh, in any Jesus. sport, period. But, yeah, like, they, they just – like, that's the cool thing about all this, too, right? It's it's just the, the – you talk about the chemistry of this team and all these different guys and big playability all over the place. I mean, you, you could still look at that game against Miami and go, you know, yeah, some of the issues with the secondary, all the offense, and Jalen Hurts getting a hit, and the, the pick six and all this stuff, they didn't play, like, a full game still. We're still looking for that. They beat the shit out of the Dolphins, and this team is locked in uh, for the most part. They're just full of talent all over the place. The chemistry's through the roof, playmaking's through the roof on both sides of the ball. I mean, they're just an absolute juggernaut. And, like, the, thinking about they they have everything going for them to the point where I don't even think for all the people who have concerns about this team, it's like, oh, my God, can this team be a contender? Like, our whole expectation is, can they be the Super Bowl favorite? Like, that's what's acceptable, I think, to everybody at this point. It's like, if they're not the Super Bowl favorite going into the playoffs, what are they? And and I think that's pretty amazing to think about because, like, they've achieved so much and proven so much, like, internally, on the field, everything you need to see. And it's just like, wow, well, well what's going to happen next? And, and honestly, who else could they add? Because they didn't give up anything. So who who knows who else is going to be on this team? Like, what, Jordan the, Hicks is coming home, baby. We're going <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so yeah. now that's the type of talk I like. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> now we're back. Unfortunately, Nicole Dean's going to have to go in that trade. Yeah. But, uh, uh, <laughs> John, I saw your tweets earlier and uh, – I, I said it last week. I never noticed Nicobe Dean when he's on the field. Uh, he is, he looks constantly uh, undersized and overmatched in a lot of these games. Uh, I'm definitely a bit concerned about his future, but for this year, the unit around him, in front of him, behind him, is so ideal and perfect for what they need that I really can't be too concerned. And as we know, 
Howie ain't giving up real value to get a linebacker anyway. So if we do get someone, he might come up with some sort of way to either take a flyer on a guy like he did with Julio Jones. Last year it was uh, Indomitian Sue. And I just feel like if there are other moves to be made sometime in this next week, because we have one more week until the trade deadline, if there are other moves to be made, I think they're going to be the same thing we've seen. It's going to be low value. It's going to be guys they know they'll either get comp picks for, or it's just going to be like, hey, let's, I'll give you the, my favorite trade in the NFL. I'll trade you a uh, seventh round pick and you give me your seventh round pick or I'll trade you a sixth round pick and whatever. It's a swap, essentially. Those are the kind of moves that I think they're going to be looking at. I, I think they've made their 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 major move. This is the big swing that they were going to take. And I think the rest of it is just going to be about rounding out. And man, we've talked about the depth on this team before, but like the safety room now just went from, all right, Reed Blankenship's out. He's looked good when he's been healthy this year, but he's out. And then you're starting a, a rookie in Brown, and Evans is banged up. He's out of the lineup. And Edmonds was, like, the worst player on the defense and and really has struggled to, wow, you get Bayard in there, and now you have Reed Blankenship as the other starting safety. You can cycle in Evans. You can cycle in Brown, who had some moments yesterday in that game. And then, like, y you go from it being a weakness to it being a strength to how deep can this defense really be just from cycling out guys, keeping guys fresh throughout the course of a game. And, and like, like Derek Barnett, it, we, t we talked about that before they kept him just for depth purposes. And he's a guy that will play a handful of snaps every single game. And he probably start on other teams. So that's, that's just, it's just, uh, it's, it is laughable how much luxury this team has, especially on the defensive side of the ball in terms of depth now. Yeah, Jesus, if Nolan Smith can get going. Oh, my God. <laughs> he had a sack last night. <laughs> like, All right. Okay, awesome. Welcome to the party. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, I, I think I think probably playing neck, playing on the line with Jalen Carter has to be the easiest job in America, I would imagine. Which is which is honestly why I – and I, I know it, the Kobe Dean thing's really my – just to, for my takes. I, 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 I thought he played fine. You know, and that's probably why he looked so fucking good at Georgia, too. That exact reason. We're seeing exactly. it right now. Jalen Carter's a Hall of Fame player. Like, yeah. Jesus. Already. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, it's just he uh, – we were talking about it in the Discord, and the fact that he's better than Hargrave in his rookie year or is matching those same tempos, you just got to be like, okay, all right. Uh, you know, like, what are, we, what are we really witnessing here? And, like – the same on the offensive side of the ball, which we'll, we'll certainly get into, too. It's just this is a very special unit. Having Hassan Reddick come out and be like, hey, uh, basically Sean Desai is not a – I don't know what he uh, – I forget what he said, but he's not scared, I think is what he said. Um, I, I thought that was a little towards Jonathan Gannon, obviously. Um, he's kind of stick to his guns. It seems like uh, there's a lot of guys that are galvanized by – not only that, but just the energy that him and dude Jordan Davis, it was just, holy crap, Kyle, uh, Kyle Hamilton's going to have to do a lot, Vince Quinn. <laughs> Already has. Already has, John. <laughs> a lot more. He's going to have to do a lot more. That dude is, I, I, he just takes up so much room. They couldn't move him. Even on double teams, they couldn't move him. And you're putting him in there. And Fletcher Cox is an afterthought. And that's absurd to think about. This whole rotation's ridiculous. It's uh, so you know, tie suit up, kid. You're playing linebacker next if they need you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if guys remember, if you guys remember in the last dance, um, I, I believe it was Gary Payton who called Dennis Robin the, the fuck up guy who just came in and just fucked shit up. Yep. Okay, that's Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. It doesn't matter who's next to them. It, it doesn't matter who's behind them. When they come in, they just fuck shit up. And for me, as a former defensive lineman, that that just brings such joy to my dark heart. All right, like, I just love offensive and defensive line play, and I just love when the big guys on the defensive side of the ball get credit. It, it was a time where we weren't talking about defensive tackles and defensive ends being the stars on defense. It was mostly the corners. It was mostly the linebackers. And now you get these once in a generational talent guys that come in and just fuck shit up. And I'm all here for it. 
Like these guys are just making everybody around them look good. John, as you, as you just said, we don't see Nicobe Dean making negative plays. We actually see the linebackers contributing a little bit. Milton Williams is starting to show forth because Jordan Davis is getting double teamed. Fletcher Cox looks like when he's up in there, looks like he's dipping in the fountain of youth. Not only that, but we don't have to rely on his presence necessarily to change a game. These guys are freeing up Hassan Reddick. Hassan Reddick's blowing up again. Now that he's got, um, he's over his thumb injury. Josh Sweat is starting to show through again. I think he had now he, he's up to five and a half sacks on the season. Yep. Like these guys, those two guys just alone, the contribution they make on this defense is is absolutely astounding, and I'm all here for it. Yep. I mean, it's just been it's been incredible to watch. I, I mean, look, I I understand that the Dolphins were missing some offensive lineman last night but that was the that's the best offense in the NFL right now every week they come out and you could see there were a few errors on their part and I know the Miami fans are losing their mind over the refing they, they, they had to they had some calls that probably you know w went against them that that weren't great but ultimately what those things happen throughout the course of a game and the Eagles defense, like Hassan Reddick blowing up the running game early and just completely shutting it down, changed the entire dynamic of this game. Because the second that they realized that running game w was not going to work in this game, it was just throw, 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 throw. And the Eagles were able to at least, I wouldn't say they didn't completely shut down the Dolphins offense because they were able to move the ball a little bit. They were able to get downfield, but they neutralized it about as best as you could. And they kept them out of the end zone, which is the most important thing coming into that game that I, I, I honestly, we talked about it probably the first episode I was ever on. And that was the game I had circled on my calendar. I was like, this is the game that I think will tell you whether the Eagles, the, the first few games were, you know, I look, they, they slept walk through, the Jets game, and, and you would have liked to win that game. But the first few games were really just kind of warm-up test games for this team. And the Dolphins, this run was going to be the thing that really tested what this team was going to look like. And this was the team that I felt like probably gave us the most problems. Like, of every team I was looking down, I was like, this team can just... The vertical passing game, Hill is just... He's the best wide receiver in the NFL. And... The, the amount of game-breaking speed and talent that they have at every single position position on the field, Tua is just laser dead accurate, and it didn't seem to matter pretty much at all last night. And McDaniel's calling up the plays like I'm just I'm I was blown away by how easily they handled that game. And honestly, if it weren't for two big mistakes that the Dolphins took advantage of, that is a complete destruction and owning of one of the best teams in the NFL. Yeah, it's a, they made them a one-dimensional team. I mean, look, they're the highest scoring offense in the NFL going into that game, right? Like, they're putting up 38 points on average a week. I mean, it's it's just not human what they were able to do. They got speed all over the field. You got elite play calling. It, it's just, it, it feels like it's almost impossible to defend, and the matchup was a really tough one. But, yeah, I mean, the way they dominated that is just, it's completely crazy. The Dolphins had to give up on the run game by halftime. And when you're looking at it, it's just third and long, third and long, third and long, third and long, third and long. That's what they're built yep. for. I mean, you're looking for a defensive game like that was it. I mean, they they were built for that. They got the pick later with Slay. Uh, just those kinds of things are, are what they're made to do. So it's really cool to see all that stuff come together. I mean, it's just uh, it, it, Desai's killing it. That guy, yep. I, like his name comes up from time to time, but... I don't think we fully appreciate how much this guy has stepped into this team and, and been absolutely killer. And I think part of that is just like the overall philosophy of, of where the Eagles have changed the last, you know, two, three years. I mean, look, this is a 4-3 team just a couple of years ago. Then it's, hey, Vic Fangio, come on in and, and teach us what the hell is going on and Gannon and all these different things. I mean, they flipped a lot here. And to get better somehow when they've been a great defensive team for a long time. I mean, it's it's just really amazing. You pile up all this talent. You see the comparisons now that are starting to creep out to the 91 team. They're wearing the Kelly Greens, which certainly helps with all of that. They've got the numbers to back it up from last season. They're piling them up again. It's it's just special. It's it's just special to see what they're doing. Called it. Called that shit. I fucking knew it as soon as they put the Kelly Green on. <laughs> I knew it.
As soon as we were sitting in that pro shop trail, and I go, it's just, it's going to take us over. They're all going to see it again, and on a Sunday night, that's, I just want to get into that for a second, all right? The old man in the room was so fucking jacked up that that defensive performance was in those jerseys, because that's all I heard from all you fucking kids forever on how midnight green, and it's a loser color, and blah, blah, blah. Seeing what you saw with Jalen Hurts and continue to see in those silver pants is exactly what I looked at with Randall Cunningham, and I wasn't even in Philadelphia yet. I went, holy shit, this is different, this is new, what is this? And that's what it reminded me of last night. That whole thing, if you ever missed, if you missed the 91, 92, the Buddy Ryan, why everybody's so in love with them and why your grandfathers are still talking about them, because it looked like that. It looked like that. You could Dan Marino could come into the vet and you would fuck him up and no one would understand why. Like they are I don't know what this is, man, but I think it's just the players and that's it's just generational players all over between what we've been talking about, but Jesus, this this Fangio scheme fits with Georgia and man, am I so glad that Howie Roseman invested in that and then Jeffrey Lurie got those colors out there. I was having a ball last night, guys. I was t- I was fucking reliving 12-year-old to 40-year-old John and it was awesome. So, thank you for letting me rant on that. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> no, it was a great you you were spot on. I it was funny. I saw some people on Twitter being like, "Well, you know, they weren't very good when they wore the Kelly Greens in the 90s, you know. They they weren't really and then I was like, who, first off, do you see what they look like out there? The The jersey is, is so cool. My girlfriend, who doesn't even watch football, co- commented on how cool they looked. Like, those, they just captivate you. And I had a tweet before the game where I said, reasons why the Eagles could lose. The Dolphins have explosive talent all around that is designed to kind of poke at the weaknesses of the Eagles' defense. Reason the Eagles won't lose it's Kelly Green game. They simply will not lose the Kelly Green jersey game. They just won't do it. It's They're not going to lose this game. And they came out and they made a huge statement after a week of questions in the media, questions from us a week ago, where was this thing going? And I, I you know, everything's been positive today. Everything's been good vibes. I don't want to bring it down. But is anyone concerned about Jalen and the injury? And, it, it, you know, he clearly did get hurt. He said that he did get hurt. He's going to play through it. We've talked about it. He's looked banged up all season, and I think that that definitely has affected him some, but also for the second straight week, I felt like I was watching a different game than everyone else. There were two individual plays that Jalen Hurts made mistakes on that you would like him to not make mistakes on, and frankly, he cannot make mistakes like that in big games. And other than that, this dude was fucking electric the entire game once again. Incredibly accurate, throwing down the field. The the short passing game looked like the best it's looked all season. Dallas Goddard was involved. Smith was involved. He was spreading the ball around. A.J. Brown deep in the passing game, short routes. It didn't matter. And and I'm I'm actually not concerned about Jalen. I would prefer that if he did have these injuries, we could just sit him out for a week or two to make sure that he's good to go when these games really, really matter. But I I just want to say that guy, that guy is just, he's nails, dude. Like he doesn't, he doesn't let any of this shit affect him. Like, like the, the Jets game was so out of character because it felt like the first time in a year that it felt like he was really being affected by what was happening during the game. And this game was a complete perfect bounce back game other than Two plays where, you know, like I said, he can't do it, but the rest of the game, he was just absolutely on fire. That yeah, play where I he was... got speared, he got, like, gored, oh. and then he landed it to A.J. Brown. Like, that Amazing. was... Amazing. It's high-level stuff. Like, that. that is all-time great. Like, you look back on, you know, let's say 20 years from now, we're looking back on this when they switch back to Midnight Green and every every because they've been Kelly for 20 years, <laughs> and, and everybody's really sad. Uh, we'll remember this era, and, and we'll see plays like that. I mean, that is that is just like the highest level kind of stuff that you can do, and it does feel like he does it all the time. I mean, it's just his ability the week before, uh, breaking through, basically stiff arming a guy, running to the sideline, chucking it down the field. Like he's just got such a gift to throw the ball in adverse situations, and it, it's not easy. And like, yeah, he's definitely taking a beating. There's no doubt about it. Uh, which is also why you shouldn't call quarterback draw every single time it's third down in the red zone. Uh, it'd be nice to calm that down a little bit. I was losing my mind early in the game. That that was the one time where I was like, 
Brian Johnson, what are you doing? Rest of the game, fantastic. No complaints for the rest of the game. That that when you get down there, and we've talked about trying to, them trying to run the ball more in the red zone because it's something that has been a strength of theirs in the past. But when it clearly doesn't work for two plays, and then you're you're designing a quarterback draw from the ten yard line, that is that that is still still major growing pains from Brian Johnson for sure. Yeah, it's, well, it's uh, that goofy meme. I'm sorry, I have to get this off my chest. It's like that. No, no, that, it's you fine. know that goofy meme where he looks like demented and he's like, "I'm I'll gonna fucking, fucking do, it, do again. it again." Yeah, like that's that's Brian yes. Johnson calling every single QB draw in the red zone. It's crazy. It's, yes. Well, that was my was was that has that been a Brian Johnson thing or has that been a Jalen Hurts thing? And everybody doesn't want to say it out loud because that makes but, sense wait, to me. Okay, all right, hold on. Right. When you're scoring 68% of the time in the red zone, you can deal with a lot of questionable things and a lot of shit. When you're scoring at the 23rd best rate in the NFL, when you have all pro talent at basically every fucking position, let's be honest, they've arguably the best all around tight end. Uh, uh, they have, uh, you know, best one of the three best wide receivers, one of the best number two wide re wide receivers in the NFL, an elite offensive line, an elite running game, and then you have Jalen, who's one of the best dual threat quarterbacks we've ever seen. Score a fucking touchdown in the red zone, okay? That's all I ask. <laughs> yeah. And they figured it out by the end of the game, but we need to see that way more consistently. That's the only now that they've they've fixed some of these defensive playmaking issues, I think, by getting guys healthy and going out and getting buyered. I think that that is the only weakness that is left on this team. Yes, yeah, that, just... that and I believe what would uncloud their minds, Trill, is if they replaced the Gatorade with their friends over at Liquid Death because uh, <laughs> finally water would be king again and we wouldn't have to go through this overthinking all the time. And Trill, I'm so happy you're here because we haven't talked about Liquid Death since you joined the show. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, I know that you and I have gotten down with their iced teas because that oh, was in... so fucking good. <laughs> I drink and, them all the time. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but like we haven't we haven't chatted with Mike in a while. We haven't been around in a while. But they're they are literally like everywhere now. They're in yep. they're in like they finally made it to Wawa. We've been bitching for two and a half years to get them in Wawa. They're in there. They're in Seven Eleven. They're all over my giant I, or Acme and and that stuff too. They have like massive walls starting to appear with uh, other flavors i've never heard of before and the watermelon that everybody tells me i need to go and grab uh, in our discord uh i'm finally grabbing that because that's uh have you guys tried it uh, that the, the i for, even forget what it's called the watermelon something or other Hell or high watermelon i believe oh, it's called. yeah is that, that's, is that that's it? the one i think uh, it's, i'm it's still stuck beer? on the uh, severed lime <laughs> Oh, maybe I'm getting that wrong. I think it's that beer. Is, is that is that two robbers? Oh. I think that's two robbers beer. But that might yeah, I think be. That's two, but there are skulls on the me can. I think it for, up here. for them. So it's yes. a, it's a cross branding go. promotion. Uh, but I, I'll tell you, like I haven't tried the watermelon <laughs> just because I've been pounding so much lime. Like we did an event at Citizens Bank a, a couple of weeks ago. And I left with like eight cases of lime in my trunk, and I've drank pretty much all of them. So it's it's like three, four, five a day. Like it's disgusting. I had a trash can next to the desk. It was yeah. full of six cans of liquid death lime. <laughs> like it's a real problem. It's so good. Uh, the armless Palmer is my favorite drink that I get literally anywhere that I go. I absolutely love it. It is uh, for my Arnold Palmer fans out there that don't want a hundred thousand grams of sugar every time you drink an Ar an Arnold Palmer. The armless Palmer is. Absolutely incredible. I get it every they have it at five below now too. I was at five below. I was like, oh, great. So I grabbed some there. Yeah, now liquid death is the best. There was uh, a peach and... tea variation. Yep. There was oh, a, yes. A, that one's liquid so death good. My God, that was delicious. Rest in Peach. It's called Rest in yes. Peach. Yeah. So good. Uh and if uh you like them, you like the hats like this that have sweat marks, uh, you know, you can find all that fun stuff, liquiddeath.com. Uh, and uh, tell them Bell and the Bird uh, sent you, but also let them know that you know birds is, uh, you know, needs needs some water too. So we're going right. to have some fun. And uh, uh, and I hope uh, the Red Zone continues to have fun because, man, Trill, you put that in perspective, and it's kind of like, yeah, what? why are you running in the Red Zone? <laughs> well, There's 70 billion hands to throw to. Like, you got to be a little more creative than that. And, you know, you're looking at the Ravens, even if you want to get, way more creative in the run game they're running triple option with lamar you know in pistol and all this other stuff like you have plenty of people to do that with too so yeah i'm yeah. With, i'm with you i i don't uh i we can 
chill on the QB draws uh, for a long time, so, uh, probably because, you know, he's going to be limping around. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't get it either. I just, we, just throw in the red zone. do more it, than just chill on those quarterback draws. All right, just stop it. No more quarterback draws. I don't need you putting my franchise quarterback in jeopardy like that because of these dumbass quarterback draw calls. Like I like the fourth quarter, five minutes left, first week against the Patriots still sticks out in my mind where Jalen Hurts gets absolutely speared. And we hardly ran the ball. To, I think DeAndre Swift only had like two touches that game, and all all the runs went to Kenneth Gainwell. And I'm just I'm just sitting here going, please, for the love of God, stop with this dumbass quarterback draw. And Brian Johnson got booed rightly so. And and I I kid you not, if I see another one of those quarterback draws one more time, Brian Johnson, your days are numbered in my book. I'm going to be calling for your head. Like I'm trying to be patient. I'm not one of those guys that just calls for people's jobs, but my God, if I see that one more time, I'm calling for your head. I'm not kidding. Well, I, I do just want to say, I was thinking the entire game last night, why aren't they running RPOs again? Like, why aren't they running it? And then they they ran one RPO, and it literally led to the pick six. I'm fairly certain that play, if, if it was not a, a play action, it looked very much like an RPO. All, all I'm going to say is I feel like they've been learning from their mistakes. I feel like in certain games, they what they were able to do last year and they were able to do in certain games this year was diagnose the weakness of the defense and pound over and over and over at that whatever that weakness was and figuring that out, diagnosing it very early and making sure that the defense cannot make adjustments. And last night, take away take away the it, – it's I know it's, it's easy to say this, but – other than the pick six, that was about the best game I've seen. Like that was reminiscent of last year. That was that was a last year. We're gonna get whatever we want, even when we get down into the red zone. We're gonna be fine. Other than that first drive, we're gonna we're gonna take advantage of the speed that we have on the outside, the talent that we have on this roster, and that's what I need to see every single week moving forward. Just that consistency, and it would be really nice just from the entire game to own from the first drive to the last drive. And they essentially did outside of a few scary moments when the Dolphins tied it up. But with this schedule that we're looking at right now, there's not a lot of easy pickings for, for those kind of games. And last thing I want to say before we do get out of here is we've talked a lot about who can compete with the Eagles in this NFC. You know, I kind of just determined everyone is mid in the NFL this year. Like everyone is mid yesterday. You know, people have been telling me for weeks about the lions and how scary they look and how they could be competitive. And my whole thing has been, you need game wrecking talent in order to win in the playoffs. You need to be solid in the trenches and you need guys that can take over a game on both sides of the ball. And I genuinely don't think the lions have that yet. I think that they're a young team. I think that over the course of these few years, sure. As Hutchinson grows into the, the player that he can become sure. Absolutely. But right now, they do not have that. They do not have the quarterback that you can win with. They don't win in the trenches. They don't have the coaching. I, you know, I know Ben Johnson's been the hot name, but they look like absolutely terrible. And they get destroyed by the Ravens yesterday. The Bills have been contenders for the last few years. They look completely lost. They've had too many injuries. In the NFC, it's basically the Eagles and the Niners, and that's kind of it to me. Like, every single team looks beatable. Every single team looks like they have severe weaknesses, and every week I'm shocked when a two and five team is competing with one of these teams that has one loss or whatever it is. But that's kind of the, the parody is crazy in the league right now, and I just I I love the fact that the Eagles are going all in because they have realized that the league is truly not that strong, and there isn't a contender that they can't beat this year. Yeah, there's it's it's heading towards another Chiefs Eagles Super Bowl. Yep, pretty it's much. It's like the, the 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 Chargers are still the Chargers. <laughs> like, yep. man, there is I even it's my fault, Detroit. If I if you were it's I fucking thought the Lions were for real. These guys laughed. I I I, I should have laughed with them. But yeah, it's there's there is nothing there, guys. There is just nothing there. So even with even during this whole sloppiness, and I think that's what's just happening here too. Though the, the this whole 17 game thing really throws off the beginning of the season I, yep. and it looks like a small thing, but I think that's just what's happening here. By the time we get into December, I think the bills will 
will be a little better than they are. You know, some some people will emerge. I'm not throwing away the Lions completely, but yeah, if we're in the same spot we were last year, if anyone has anything or any reservations about the Eagles not being the best team in the NFL, one of two, then uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what else you need to see. So yeah, it's an incredible spot. This fucking team lost the Super Bowl, is six and one, and shut down one of the best offenses in the NFL. Unbelievable. <laughs> what Unbelievable. else do you need right now? Just, you know? just a quick question for you guys. Is anyone aware of what the Pittsburgh Steelers record is right now? Is it now th three and three? They are four and two. Oh, that ew. tells you everything that you need to ew. know about the NFL. The Pittsburgh Steelers are four and two. That is what you need to know. And they just beat the Ravens. Like, this Ooh. league is mid. There's no one the Eagles should be afraid of. And you just said we're on pace for a Chiefs Eagles Super Bowl. I'm not, I don't think the Eagles have looked as good as they have last year. I don't think the Chiefs have either, to be completely honest with no. you. There really hasn't been a ton of statement wins from teams that look unbeatable. Honestly, the 49ers probably have the most of anyone if you look at their schedule. And even, like, and, and I talk about game-wrecking talent, Miles Garrett yesterday. Miles Garrett in that 49ers game. Like, that's the kind of talent you need to have to win in the playoffs. And I actually, I, I'm not completely fading the Lions either because their schedule is absolutely a joke after this. They could still get the one seed easily in my mind. Just miss me with all the playoff talk. I, I, I would gladly go to Detroit if I'm the Eagles. I would hope to play them at home. I would gladly, like, I don't think that they stand a chance against... I'm, I'd be willing to go as far to say I think the Cowboys are a better playoff team than the Lions. Like, I just think that the Cowboys have more game wrecking and they are better where it counts in the playoffs. They are better on the offensive line. They're better on the defensive line. And they have talent on both sides of the ball that can wreck a game in a way that I don't think that the Lions do right now. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. The Lions are fun. They're, they're a good team. Yeah. It's a good story. They're building a franchise. Like they, It's taken them a long time to get to this point, and congratulations to them. But like they're not a Super Bowl contender. They're just definitely they're – not, they're not really ready for it. It's, it's just getting to the playoffs, getting experience, maybe you win a game, and, and that's about it. There's nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, for the Eagles, like you're right on the doorstep, and you got every reason to go take the conference, go in the Super Bowl, and that's why I'm just going to say it right now. Austin Eckler, folks. Austin Eckler – Austin oh, Eckler, the final piece. Austin Eckler, <laughs> the Chargers are two and oh, four. He hates their guts. Uh, he's a running back. They might as well take a pick. The Eagles don't give a fuck about running back styles, clearly, because basically all their guys are the same. So why not go get Eckler and get Rashad Penny out of here? Like that sounds like the play to me, and I'm rooting for it really hard. Get me, get me, Austin Eckler. Same, uh, uh, but uh, just call the Titans one more time and actually pry away <laughs> Derrick Henry. Yeah, at this point, I mean, there was already rumors in the offseason. You might as well just finish the job. Just finish the franchise off. But at this point, like, I, I it's funny because I, I talked to a couple of friends of mine who are 49ers fans, and they're just like, they're still bragging to me about how dominant they've been this entire season. And I'm like, who have you beaten? Who have you truly beaten? Honestly, their best win be. was against the Steelers, if you look at their entire schedule. Exactly. And the Steelers are not a 4-2 and two team. They just have a 4-2 and two record. But they destroyed they're, the Steelers opening week. They're not that good. Please humble yourselves before you come into Philadelphia again and be humbled again. Please stop talking. There's no other team in the NFL that I am scared of. I'm not scared of the Cowboys. They're too inconsistent. I'm not scared of the 49ers. They've been exposed. I'm damn sure, as I said from the very beginning of the season, in the offseason, John, I'm not scared of the fucking Buffalo Bills. <laughs> All right, Josh Allen is overrated. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to say it. I was one of the biggest Josh Allen supporters. He is overrated. I, but at this point, I'm not scared of anyone. Like, at this point, I just sit back, and I'm just like, huh, peasants. And... By the way, on top of that, Bills are missing four defensive starters for the rest of the season now. I think that they're pretty dead in the water, to be completely honest with you. I think that if you were to tell me there are f there, I think there are four or five teams that could realistically win a Super Bowl. And I think John was completely right when he said Chiefs and Eagles just feels Patrick Mahomes with a potentially really good defense versus uh, an Eagles team that just has not really missed a step outside of that one game against the Jets that they they had to turn the ball over four times to lose a game by a touchdown. Like, 
I, I'm, I, I, I still probably won't get over it. It's just like yesterday after they won, and I'm like, they still gave up that third and 17, though. That third and <laughs> 17 against the best offense. They only gave up one touchdown, but they did give up the third and 17. We'll always be perfectionists, but um, any thoughts uh, win, win against the commander sweet season sweep coming next week? Uh, Easy, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you see uh, Marcus Mariota a little early in this one. Yeah, I, I feel that's that's on it. I mean, good lord, when you uh, when you lose to Tyrod Taylor, it's time to go home. <laughs> it's time, yeah, I mean, to be fair, to Tyrod home. Taylor might be better than Daniel Jones, but yeah, he is. Yeah, <laughs> I was watching that and I was like, he might be better than Daniel Jones. Talk about a two hundred million dollar mistake! My God, <sighs> yeah. Vince, any last thoughts? Yeah, no, uh, it, yeah, they're going to beat Washington. I mean, Sam Howell played the game of his life last time. There's just, there's no way he's going to play like that again. There's no chance. And we'll have Bayard in this game, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, uh, yeah they're, they're going to wreck Washington. It's going to be great. We get to breathe a little bit. Uh, Phillies in the World Series. Uh, I'm just going to say it now. It's, it's clearly happened. They won game six. I see the future. Um, so I'm just <laughs> letting everybody know and uh, excited to see that. So I'm, I'll see you at City Hall. Yep. Also, I, I hope uh, that Josh Harris has good uh, health insurance for uh, <laughs> Sam Howell. I'll just say that much. Hope he's paying for that. Uh, two touchdowns for Julio in this one, so bet it. Ooh. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Well, I said Next. they solved. They here. Listen, they solved the red zone problems. We all know that Julio falls on the one yard line, and we can just do the brotherly shove from there. So that's that's solving all of our red zone issues. So, all right, go Phils, go Birds, go Vikings tonight. Let's get it.